Good evening, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in to Africa Sports Consultancy in our um, weekly show. It's um, always an honor and a privilege to have you with us. We appreciate all of your support and you always tuning in. Um, tonight, we have someone exciting in studio. We have Henri Stein. Uh, you've probably seen all the posters and banners about Henri. Um, but before we get to that, we'll just like to show you who our sponsors for this week is. And our sponsor is TK Art. And um, short little snippet for you. See what TK Art is about. As you can see, beautiful art pieces that TK Art puts together. Please drop them a line, um, get in touch with them. As you can see, that this is some beautiful wildlife photography. Now, back to Andre. Andre, you're on the other side. How are you doing today? I am very well in you. No, I'm doing very well, thanks. Thank you so much. I know that um, it's not always easy to get a, a hold of you. You're obviously busy with uh, your cricket and everything else. So thank you so much for joining us. No, no worries at all. Thanks for having me. So I'm going to dive right into it, Andre. It's, um, we've got half an hour, so I want to make the most out of it and make sure that our viewers also get the most out of this. Um, so. I, I'm going to go right from the beginning. Um, where, where, where did it all start for you, your cricketing journey? Um, I think mine started, uh, I think like most kids in South Africa. Um, so sort of Baker's mini cricket. So uh, now KFC mini cricket, basically. Um, when I was seven, um, you know, that's sort of up in, up in Pretoria. So it started, started with that. And then... Um, sort of was introduced, I actually didn't know much about women's cricket and then I was introduced to it in grade uh, four, I think it was, uh, with centre trials. Because um, up until that point, I sort of sort of was only playing with the boys. Um, and then, yeah, sort of from there, just yeah, I sort of went through the ranks under 13, under 16, under 19. Um, yeah, and then, oh, what was after that? Uh, fortunate enough to sort of play with the the northern's lady side um from about 14 and then SA side at 17 and then yeah sort of the rest moved on to Cape Town for studies and yeah here I am now <laughs> oh fantastic it's yeah so, so you had to start off playing with the boys you say Yes, yes. Um, started off playing with the boys. Um, I carried on playing with the boys actually until about grade 10, I think it was. Um, and then I sort of had to stop um, purely because um, at that point in time, the boys had sort of obviously um, started pulling away like physically. So obviously like a lot stronger, a lot quicker, that sort of a thing. Um, and it was actually like making batting against the girls a lot more difficult because I mean, you, I got so used to facing like all of this um, pace. And then all of a sudden you're facing the goals and it's like really, really slow. So it was, it was actually starting to like affect my like playing like provincially with the woman was actually starting to affect that. So I had to like call it, call it quits for the boys. And yeah, um, from then on, it was yeah, obviously just ladies all the way bar uh, one or two like club games with like the third team. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, f fantastic. And uh, you say that obviously playing with the boys now, this is where, for me, it, it always gets interesting as a young girl growing up. Who, who did you watch? Who, who did you watch on TV and you thought, you know what, I want to be like them? Um, I think banning-wise, it's probably Jacques Callas at first. And then now, uh, well, not now, like after him, I think it was um, Hashim Amla. I loved his cover drive. Um, like that, that, like when the wrist sort of came through, then I'm like, I'd lose my mind. Um, and then sort of now lately, um, 
a lot more like obviously with the woman's um, Elise Perry who plays for Australia. Um, absolute fan goal. Um, so yeah, those are my I guess three sort of batting, if I could call it that, batting like uh, idols. Oh, fantastic! And now suddenly here you are. You are now the batting idol for the next oh, young gosh. girl sitting somewhere. Um, I hope so. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Hope, hopefully, somewhere is thinking. Okay, at least she be like she bats decently enough. Let's try and like, let's try and do that. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Look, I'm jumping the gun a little bit there. Um, let, let, we'll just take take a little step back and I want to ask you about your first full on match. So obviously you've, you've you've grown up like you said playing within the boys setup. Um, I, I want to jog your memory really really back here. So your first full match that you can remember. Uh, and do you remember who it was against and what happened? <laughs> you're, 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 you're testing me. Um, I can't, I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I can't remember the first one. Um, I do remember once, there was one specific one where, it, sure, I think we were maybe grade eight-ish um, playing with the boys. And... I think it was like St. Stithians it might have been against. And I mean, like they fairly decent up in Joburg. Um, and yeah, this, I'm not going to lie. This boy was really, really quick. Um, and all I remember is like, I saw the ball when he released it. And then I heard stumps behind me, but in between there was nothing. So <laughs> that's, yeah, I think that's like, bar another full match. I, I honestly can't remember, but yeah, that's, I don't, yeah, that, that vivid picture stays with me. <laughs> <laughs> so you getting bowled out is yep. one of your top memories of starting out. How about not that? A, not, a, not a top memory. I just think it's a reminder. <laughs> yeah, it's a reminder of not to like, you know, it's like a, a flashback that keeps coming through. Just don't do that again. <laughs> <laughs> so it keeps you very humble, you say? I th yeah, I th yeah. I don't think, yeah, I, I don't know. I just don't think I ever don't like normally at least if you if you go out like bold at least you saw the ball on the way whereas like that one I didn't even see the ball it was too quick so yeah I just don't want that again <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna take you from there okay we're gonna skip again we're gonna skip quite a few years I'm gonna take you from there you've gone from being bowled out by this boy who's bowled the ball so fast you haven't even seen it coming and then you're 17 year, years old and you're making your debut the pro yeah that was um that was a bit of a crazy one um so yeah wait, let me start sort of how it like led into uh, me getting called up um it was beginning 2014 sort of like jan 2014 and then they sort of had like a little t20 tournaments thing down in cape town um so it was called like north versus south so obviously every like the top players from like your northern and like a Gauteng, uh, northwest, like sort of those provinces. Um, they all played in a team and then you obviously had like your, your southern provinces. So, you know, Western Cape, all of those. Um, and then I was fortunate enough to, to good, like put up a good performance in, in, in that T20 game. Um, and then luckily enough, the, the uh, SA head coach was there that day and obviously he saw. And then, yeah, I think it was about two weeks later. Um, I was busy training up at Supersport Park, um, a provincial training. And then, yeah, that night they just let me know, listen, you're going to the World Cup, the G20 World Cup in Bangladesh. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, so it was very, very unexpected. Just because I hadn't, e I hadn't even at that point, I hadn't like, even played like emerging um, games or been like within the SA setup at all. Um, so it was very unexpected. Um, but yeah, it was... Um, very nervous, obviously, as well, and like big stage, because all of a sudden, like you're playing with the people who you sort of um, looked up to as well. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a crazy one, but yeah. Amazing, absolutely fantastic. Not many people get to play for their country, and here you are at 17 years old, and you're doing that. And I've asked you about a memory about when you were bowled out by this boy who was bowling pretty fast, Shane. Um, <laughs> but now, tell me about your debut. What, what do you remember about your debut? Tell me about how you felt and some of the, perform, the performance you put in that day. 
So the debut um, I made against the West Indies, um, it was actually a warm-up game to the World Cup. Um, and I, sure, I batted very low down. I think it was sort of, it was one of those games where like everyone who's a batter sort of batted um, and everyone who bowled like sort of bowled. It was one of those like arranged games. Um, so I batted very, very low. I think about about seven or eight. And I only, I think I went in, there was only like three or four, three or four balls left. And um, I was facing Deandra Dotson, sort of like a fast, skiddy, or medium fast, like skiddy bowler. Um, and I was extremely nervous. Um, and I'm trying to think now. I think I scored two runs off of my four balls at the back end of a T20 innings. Uh, <laughs> but just the fact that I didn't go out, I was very proud of myself. Um, yeah, so it was a, and then like, yeah, the, the fielding side of it was really good. I'm not going to lie, I saved a few boundaries um, from what I can remember. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was, um, like I said, I think I felt very like starstruck at that stage because I mean, you obviously had like all of these people now in your team, like a Tanay Fanekark and a Marizan Cup and like all of these massive players. And then just from the West Indies side as well, like a Stefani Taylor, DeAndre Dotton. And now all of a sudden you like find yourself in the middle and these people are like, you know, they're bowling the ball at you now. Um, so, yeah, but it was a really cool experience to have. Um, yeah, that's what I can remember from, from the debut. Fantastic. And, and I don't know um, if you should be scared of Deandra Dotton with the bat in hand or with the ball in hand, because I know she hits a long, long ball. She does. She does. Sometimes as a fielder, you are a little bit afraid. Um, just at how hard the ball comes. Like most of the time you're sort of hoping she hits it over rather where you don't have a chance to catch it. <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> just because she hits it that hard. Coaches it. I know, I, I shouldn't be so. saying this at all. <laughs> um, but um, no, look, you're, she's a fantastic all-rounder. Um, but yeah, if, you know what? If the ball does come, I'll stick out a hand. So uh, that's, I need to redeem myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely have no doubt. And you, again, you've you've done this seventeen. You're in the pro tier setup. Um, you're going quite nicely. And obviously now, a couple of years down the line, I think that would have been 2014. You made your debut, you say? Yeah, 2014. 2014 it would yeah. be. Um, and now you obviously quite a way down the line. So I know which one my favorite innings watching you is. So I'm not going to share that uh, as yet, but. What innings for you stands out? What, which one is your favorite pro tiers knock? Um, sure. There's, there's two, I think. Um, there's the one where I got, I think it has to be my favorite. Um, I got 117 against Ireland. So obviously like you're made an international 100. Like that's always going to be a massive, like you're always going to remember that. That was in Poch uh, in 2017. You sort of had like a triangular series, us, India and Ireland. Um, so yeah, that's obviously a, a massive thing, um, like scoring a hundred. Um, and I think when I scored the hundred as well, it was weird. I didn't really celebrate. I like, I didn't celebrate like right then and there. It felt like more of a relief than anything else. Not because I didn't enjoy the, the moment at all. I think it was more just because it's something that you as a batter like been working towards your entire life and you always knew you could do it. And now all of a sudden it's like actually happened and you're just like, Oh, okay. Like you've made it to like the top of your little, I don't know, your little mountain there. Um, so that was, that was really, really cool. Um, and then the other one that I really enjoyed as well was uh, the final of that same triangular series we played against India. Um, and obviously like their spinners are, you know, spin to us South Africans are sometimes a little bit of a mystery. Um, and yeah, their, their spinners were bowling really well that series. Um, and I've got uh, 83, I think we are, I got 83 in that final. Um, but for me, just um, just the way that inning specifically, the way I was playing the spinners like really, really well was, yeah, that I, I, I was really proud of myself, if I could say that in that in that innings. That was a really nice one as well. Spot on. So we were on the same wavelength. That, that match against Ireland, that was a match winning knock. Absolutely sensational innings. And um, yeah, I, I remember it because I, I saw most of it. I won't say I saw every single bit of it, but I, I did see the highlights of it. And I thought, mm -hmm. wow, what a player. And in such a precious situation, you've come in, you've turned up and 
yeah, it's it's definitely one that's. I, I guess it was high up on your list. Let me just say it that way. Yeah, yeah. I think I'd, I think a person should be a bit worried if your if your international hundred isn't high up on the list. Um, but no, that was a really really nice one. Um, I think that, that, that that's one of those days where like if you're gonna ask the person how they did it, they're not gonna like I'm not gonna remember how at all, which is normally how these things work, I guess. Um, but yeah, that was sort of a day where like. I guess the stars sort of aligned. Everything was, yeah, just worked out really well. So, Fantastic. Well, we're privileged enough. If you're joining us, we are talking to our pro tiers batsman, opening batter, Andre Stain, just telling us about one of her best innings where she saved the day for her country, scoring 114 against Ireland, playing at Poch. Now, Andre, I'm just going to ask you now. So as, as a woman playing professional sport, um, what are the challenges that come with that? Oh, <laughs> sure. You might need longer than half an hour. Um, no, look, there's, uh, I guess with every sport, like obviously within, I'm going to stick specifically within South Africa, obviously with every sport, each of, you know, has its own challenges, but, um, I don't know. I think with cricket so far, speaking specifically cricket now, we've been fortunate in the sense where there's been more drive internationally within the women's game than other sports maybe in South Africa. So I think in that sense, we might be a little bit more fortunate because obviously like contracts have come into place and things are sort of on the up globally. And it does obviously put pressure on, on a country like South Africa to sort of keep up with the rest, if I could call it that. So we've been fortunate in that sense. Um, but I mean, we do obviously still sh fall short sometimes in the sense of um, if we're going to compare um, South African female cricket to an Australia or an England who are obviously the best of the best. And that's obviously something that we want to become as, you know, as, as a South African side um, is the best of the best. Um, then if you look at the structures that they, for example, have in place, just, you know, um, like domestically club wise um, in terms of making um, cricketing like a, a, an actual profession for females much earlier on, um, you know, like that's something that, that the prep school kids, um, if I could call it that can think of as a career, like straight away. Um, whereas with us, you really have to be the select elite few before you can really make a, a, a career out of it. Um, so that's unfortunately something. And I think a lot of, a lot of girls are also lost like straight after matric, um, purely because they see that like, I don't know, I, I guess they sort of look at the reality of it all and they're like, well, what are the odds that I'm going to be one of those elite few? Um, so, I mean, hopefully in the new, near future with the, with the way that like women's cricket has grown in the last few years, hopefully um, we can get those sort of structures in place just to be able to, um, how can I say, like broaden, broaden the amount of actual people or, you know, girls that, that do um, look to play professionally. Because in that sense, you're just going to have more, um, more comp like more competition at the top and then you know and then your your, your international side will just get better and better um so yeah and um, that's probably the biggest the biggest one yeah that's so that was a lot my apologies <laughs> that that was a loaded question and yeah. you've you've answered very very well and you know in a in a space that's for so long has often been so male dominated. It's it's great to hear that there's opportunities being created for mm. for girls out there. There's there's a girl sitting somewhere in South Africa who can grow up with 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 a dream and with an ambition to one day play, be it for the pro tiers, be it in cricket and netball, hockey. Yeah. You know the, the the spectrum is much much broader now, which is absolutely yeah. phenomenal to hear. And in your opinion, do you think enough is being done for the for the women's game, not just in, in cricket, just across the board? <laughs> I <don't>, uh, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I don't think so. Um, I don't know. I feel like some, I, you're, you're putting me on the spot here. I feel like sometimes we, we wait for other countries to do things um, and we don't take lead. And I really think that with this country having so much potential in terms of sporting ability, like it's honestly ridiculous, the amount of sporting ability in this country. Um, if, if we literally take lead 
um, in terms of putting the things in place that need to be put in place. Yeah, like I really think we'll we'll win a lot more than what we are currently at the moment. Um, yeah, that's that's I'm gonna make that my answer. <laughs> It's a brilliant answer, yeah. I've, I've put you on the spot there a little bit, but <laughs> I think these are these are important conversations to have because yeah. at at the end of the day, uh, we need to create an environment which fosters and has spaces for for young girls because mm -hmm. there is talent out there, there is opportunity, and there should definitely be um, equal opportunity for mm -hmm. a young boy and a young girl growing up, you know, and. Mm -hmm. Definitely should strive for that. Um, and tell you what, um, yeah, you can go on. So no, all no, all I wanted to say was um, was the oh goodness, now I lost my train of thought. It'll come back to me. Sorry, carry on. I'll yeah. If it comes back to me, I'll let you know. That's fine. <laughs> That's fine. But I I think I recognise the shirt you wear. Um, yeah, listen, it's a no. very much a coincidence. <laughs> Now, tell me something re really quickly, really briefly. Um, I know that's a UWC cricket top and um, that is affiliated to an organization called Sports Skills for Life Skills. Yes. Uh, what, what's the impact they've had on your life? Um, so obviously Sports Skills for Life Skills is obviously driven or started by, by um, Nicholas Cock. Um, and I was fortunate enough. So when I um, was choosing, so I got in at, in, at um, Poch and then at UWC as well um, to do um, sports science. Um, and at that stage, the cricket in the Western Cape was much better than at Northwest. Um, so I decided to come down to Cape Town um, and met, so met with Nick um, before Varsity even started, obviously, you know, with him driving sports skills for life skills and, and that. And um, I'll never forget one of his, his, like his first conversations I had with him, he was like, you here to study first and then play cricket. Like it's not the other way around. If you're not going to pull through with your studies, then, you know, there's no point of you, you know, you can't rely on your sport if I could call it that, you know, cause you could get injured at any point in time. Um, and I think just that, that sort of mindset, um, you are really, it was great for me to hear as well that that's sort of the mindset, because I think a lot of the time people rely sort of they don't have that backup plan if I could call it that and then they, you know it's, anything can obviously happen to you at any day and you have nothing to fall back on um so just from that first day um getting that message and then just walking into the UWC like sort of um community cricketing community as well I mean I can really say that everyone was so extremely welcoming regardless of you know regardless of like who they are and where they're from and you know all of those sort of things um it was really, really like a, a great place for me to come into and just to learn more about the game. Um, obviously, at that point in time, having a lot of old, uh, uh, older like um, Western Province players who were still playing for UWC. So for me to like come in and to learn and to have that sort of guidance as well on the cricketing front, mixed with these, mixed with like sort of the sports skills for life skills drive, which is people who really care about the education side and about you as the individual as well. Um, yeah like I couldn't have asked for anything more at that point if I could call it that so I, I want to weigh in on that but before I do that I'm just going to give our viewers an opportunity if you have any questions that you'd like to ask Henri please type them in the comments um, and then I can I can ask her that because obviously we've got a few minutes remaining but going back to what you've just spoken to Henri it's it's absolutely phenomenal what you've spoken about to say um, just having that awareness and that balance of sports and education. And um, we are an organization which strives for that. And we are not saying that you can't be successful with one without the other, but obviously it opens up your horizons much wider if you have both. And if you can have people who are there for you, having that conversation with you as you start your career to say, Henri, don't just forget about your studies, also mm -hmm. pursue that. Um, there's not enough of those conversations taking place. There's yeah. more conversations of, oh, no, you're in grade nine. You're going to be the world's best cricketer. You can drop out of school now. Yeah. And then there's so many people who are stuck in that rut now where they've got nowhere else to go because they've narrowed um, their, their options way too fast. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can relate to something like that. 
Mm. No, 100%. And I think, um, especially like, like, like exactly what you said now, look, I'm not saying that you, you have to do both. That's like, I'm not saying you're not going to be successful in the one, you know, so always have the other. It's, it's not that. It's really just, I really have found that if you do have both, sport can teach you so much about just life in general. Um, and then studies can teach you so much about dealing with things in sport as well. Like I found that studies really, it teaches you discipline. And I mean, that really carries over into your training. Like, you know that I need to study now. I can't go out now with my friends or whatever. And it really drives in over into sport in the sense where like, if you know you need to go to training or you know you need to run, you know, and that last sort of set, whatever, um, that sort of stuff like really drives over like one into the other. Um, and I just, yeah, I think it, it's going to make you a more like, whole rounded human being and like sports individual because i mean you are obviously a human being before you are an athlete or whatever you may be um and i just think that sometimes the two of them can complement each other really well um even though it might be a little bit more extra effort but it pays off so much more in the long run i think so yeah wow those those are golden words coming out <laughs> from our pro tier superstar andre stania and you, you've nailed it on the head um you've actually answered one one of our viewers questions dean has just asked how did education change your perspective of sport and you've mm. basically just just spoken to that and um, those who know me i'm biased towards cricket by the way but those who know me <laughs> well i always say how you play your cricket is how you live your life um mm. and i've seen that um in, in so many spheres but we've got a question here from claire claire to blanche she's asked here Henri, can you tell us the feeling of scoring a century for your country? Oh, gosh. Okay, so that is that is my coach, my Western province coach, who's probably tuned in late and now didn't hear me answering the question. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, will, I will answer it again. Um, no, it, it was obviously, like I said earlier, it, really enjoyed the moment um felt a little bit more of a relief not that i didn't enjoy it in the moment but a little bit of a relief in the sense of it's something you've always worked towards it's sort of like the end goal this big dream that you always dream of um and then finally sort of getting it you sort, you sort of like sigh and like oh okay i actually made it like this is really cool um not that you don't go again and and, and work again but i think yeah for, for that day, it was just, um, you yeah. know, there's honestly like no words. All I remember is just like, like this relief and like sighing. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I actually did it just because I knew I always could. Um, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, that must have been a really, really special moment. Um, yeah. like, you've, like you've mentioned already. I'm not surprised. But be, just before we close off again, I just want to um, give a shout out to TK Art. Um, they have sponsored the show tonight and um, just to show you again some of their art, what they're busy with, beautiful wildlife photography pics. Uh, I wish I could draw, uh, but I've got no chance when it comes to this sort of thing. Yeah, no, but for, for those of you who appreciate good art, um, you definitely can have a look there. But Henri, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. You are a role model. You are what? One day, hopefully, I'll be privy enough to have a, a son, a daughter, or anyone out there watching. You are the sort of people that they need to be listening to. You are the sort of people that you're a great ambassador for the sport. And as a human being, what you've come out and said today is absolute gold and really, really appreciate. Oh, geez. Thank you so much. Um, sure. I just hope I could live up to their, to their expectations and just, yeah try and be a, a good person um so yeah but thank you so so much for having me and it was really nice chatting to you as well cheers thanks for that andre and uh please when when you score your next hundred just you can just say it was all the tips that you got during this live um that got you just there. give a shout out <laughs> yeah <laughs> just give a shout out <laughs> absolutely oh, okay. fantastic andre thank you so much no no worries cool bye cheers Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We had Henri Stain here with us tonight. She, she was kind of, and as you heard, she's a phenomenal ambassador for the sport. And um, 
yeah, absolutely amazing human being. Thanks again for tuning in. Um, remember to look after your loved ones. Keep sanitizing, as I keep saying. I don't know when I'll stop saying that. And um, take care of yourselves. Join us here again next week, same place, same time. Until then, take care and keep your eyes out on our website. It is launching very